Welcome back to Prague in the Czech Republic for the 2022 ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup. The first race of the five race series in 2022 and it's finals time. 220 athletes from 36 nations have gathered here and we're into the sharp end of racing. Women's kayak and men's kayak finals. We are down to the top 10 in each category and only 23 gates stand between each athlete and World Cup glory. Perfect conditions here and uh, a big crowd gathering for these finals with eager anticipation. This popular course on the outskirts of the city of Prague and uh, here perfect conditions, 23 degrees centigrade, very little wind and ideal temperatures for our athletes as they go for gold here in the World Cup. 23 gates, our course designers Stefano Cipressi and Yuri Preskovic. Six upstream gates, the rest are downstream gates and that is the challenge that's been set. Women's kayak up first, then the men's kayak in reverse. It's a challenging course for the K1 women. Um, it, it's uh, this sequence from 17 to gate 20, I think is gonna be particularly interesting because it comes at the bottom of the course when the athletes are already fatigued. Um, also, you're coming out of it with a lot of speed and the, the goal here is to come through 17, hit 18 and then spin very quickly so that you're going reverse through 19 and can make it back to gate 20. And I think that's a very challenging sequence um, that uh, should be pretty exciting for the race. So here we have the start list, our 10 finalists in reverse order of their position in the semi-finals. Myself, Andy Maddock, I will talk you through the action and I'm pleased to have joining me in the commentary booth, Sofia Reynoso of the Mexican team. Welcome back to the booth. Thank you. I'm super excited to watch these finals. They should be pretty exciting. And we are underway with racing. The first of our finalists, Mallory Franklin of Great Britain. World Championship silver medalist and fresh from a, world, a European Championship bronze medal a couple of weeks ago in Liptovsky Mikolas at the European Championships there. And well, the opportunity to really lay a marker down. The fastest run time, 102.26. That was achieved in the semi finals, and that's the kind of benchmark as we get into the sharp end of racing. So any reflections from the semi-final, Sophia? Yeah, I mean, it was hard to get the best top 10, but I think it's a tight field for everyone. And uh, Mallory is putting down a good time right now. She just also recently married, I heard. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think she was married in December time. And uh, yeah, Mallory was fast in the semi-final but had penalties but still managed to get into the final and it will start from zero again so the opportunity to lay one down maybe put a bit of pressure on those still to come and now towards the business end of the course this is what we heard lee leapfast just talking through this is the tricky move 18 19 we've seen a few penalties but a good tidy move from mallory definitely this is where she touched last time so i think she's concentrated on having a clean run this time so it looks like she's doing it um, clean and fast for the moment. We'll see this last exit, which gets pretty um, complicated when you're tired. One gate to go for Mallory Franklin. 102 was the fastest raw time in the semi finals. Going to be outside of that, but it's a good time. And 106.15, it's a clean run for Mallory Franklin of Great Britain. And that sets the benchmark that everybody else has to follow now. So what do you think to that? Is that enough for the podium? Ah, I'm not sure. It's a, it's a good time, but there's a, a lot of good paddlers coming ahead. So we will see. Well, you're live from Prague in the Czech Republic, this women's kayak final. 10 boats, and then of course, we'll be live straight away afterwards with the men's kayak final. There we see Mallory Franklin has a, a long way ahead of her to see if that's enough for a place on the podium. 
Yeah, I think that's one of the downsides of being first. <laughs> So great to see a big crowd here, and the crowd gets so close to the action here on this uh, Prague white water course. They're all eager to see Czech representation, which they've got in both finals. Yeah, definitely important. <laughs> Eight nations represented in this competition. Next to start, Ana Satila for Brazil. And a, well, a hugely accomplished paddler, uh, been to three Olympic Games and is a junior world champion, under 23 world medalist, and uh, well, certainly no stranger to performing under pressure in a final. As I say, eight nations represented in this women's kayak final. We have two German paddlers, two Czech paddlers. But, uh, it's wide open as to where the honors are going to go. Anna's always a really exciting paddler. She always uh, takes risks and uh, she's certainly attacking the course now. 1.1 up on Franklin of Great Britain, but has that advantage gone with a touch on gate 11? Yeah, definitely the Latina fire here. She's a, a very good paddler, but sometimes she touches on the finals, even though she's really fast. So I think she can still be really fast even with the touch. Well, she's um, certainly got that rhythm, hasn't she? She's certainly not let that little mistake affect yeah. her as she comes down to the bottom. And we'll get an indication. Well, she's still in touch. 1.89 down on Franklin of Great Britain, our current race leader, but she's still in the mix. Mm -hmm. Very good spin there, super fast to the up. Two seconds in penalties for touching a gate with any part of your body, your boat or your paddle. A 50 second penalty if you incorrectly negotiate the gate or miss it. So game over in that situation. And Ana Satila of Brazil coming through nicely the last couple of gates. The time to beat at the moment, 106.15. It's going to be outside of that time and into second place. 108.74, another well, there is a review on gate 11, but I think she did touch it. Yeah, it looked like a touch for sure. So we shall wait and see. But early yeah, in without this the touch, she was she was really fast. But I guess a touch is a touch. Here, this is what the penalty judges will be looking at. They have a number of angles, and there we see it. The actual yeah. touch is with the left pole, with the front of the boat as she comes down. There's our international technical officials reviewing each gate as it comes down. And, uh, well, no doubt about that, the touch on gate 11 with the bows of the boat. Yeah, it looks like she was just a bit tight on the pole. So she hit both poles. Yeah. So penalty confirmed and the result confirmed. Mallory Franklin leads ahead of Anna Satila with eight boats. Still to go in this win women's kayak final in the first World Cup of the ICF canoe slalom World Cup season. Well, next to start, Stephanie Horn of Italy. Very much the form boat of the moment. European champion from a couple of weeks ago. And uh, very much, uh, well, she I think she took the gold at the Augsburg um, International uh, just uh, a week ago. Yeah, she medaled. I I'm not sure if silver, but she did really well. I think it's her home course. And having two medals in the start of the season already, I think puts her definitely at the top. We'll see what she can pull out in this run. I think it's exciting to watch her paddle. She's got a very like strong technique. She's another competitor that had penalties in the semi-final, still qualified through into the final. So we know she's got the pace and she's shown that on the top split, 1.1 up on the early split, but uh, is that a touch? It looks oh. like it on the upstream gate 13. Yep. That's confirmed with the bows of the boat. So fast and clean is the name of the game in canoe slalom. You've got to be super fast to absorb any yep. penalties, uh, particularly when you get to the sharp end of racing in a World Cup final. Yeah, I think it's crazy to see when someone wins with a touch, it's, on, it's uh, quite unreal. So now the deficit, well, the advantage has gone to a deficit. And is that another touch on gate 19? Stephanie Horn not having it all her own way as she goes into 
the final three gates of the course and uh, these three gates have uh, not been straightforward either. Mm -mm. No, I think that last curler with the hole above it, it's easy to turn right before it and it's easy to have a touch on that um, 22 gate. So, and you're really tired at that point, so you got to keep it together. So, Stephanie stops the clock in third place, 112.59. One, one, that includes four seconds of penalties. And there's our current leader, Mallory Franklin on the left, Anna Satila on the right. And uh, disappointment for Stephanie Horn, and certainly I thought the momentum she'd had from the last few weeks would have uh, mm -hmm. definitely Helped shown her as a big challenger for the podium, but she's not going to do that today. No, no, no. I think it's also the pressure. Great camera shots here just show just how tight these athletes get to the poles and the margins involved in canoe slalom between glory and uh, disappointment is very, very small indeed. Yeah, fine line for sure. Next to start for Australia, the world number one, Jessica Fox. And uh, well, one to watch the World Cup champion of last year. In fact, the last three times the World Cup has been staged, then uh, Jessica has been the champion, but an early penalty. She just went in too tight on there. Mm -hmm. She went uh, way too tight on that. But we see with Jessica, you never know a touch. Sometimes she can be faster than the touch, so she still has got too many gates ahead of her. She's a three-time Olympic medalist. A three-time world champion in this kayak event. And of course, we'll see her in action in the canoe event tomorrow. You can follow all that at Planet Canoe live, 9 o'clock, the semi-finals. And despite the two-second penalty, she is still up on the split. Mm -hmm. She's going very fast, super fast move there with the hole. Look like, looks like it didn't even stop her. Very fast. Well, she's certainly attacking this course, 23 gates. Stand between her and a place on the podium. And uh, now, this is the critical section. She's, you could say, done the easy bit. That's a, a little bit of a, an underestimation. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, she's extended the advantage just slightly. But this is where she needs to find a bit more time over what we think is around about 102 in order to certainly get on the podium. So there's still a bit of time to be found by Super Jessica. Super tight on that 21 gate. Direct, really good. Direct line on the bottom. Now, she's just got to dig deep. The time to beat, 106.15. She's going to be well inside that. She's got a two-second penalty, but she is in the race lead. And look at that time, 103.91. And that includes a two-second penalty. The fastest women's run time of the day. Definitely super exciting to watch her. Even with touches, she can always be really fast. It's a... A pleasure to see that. Yeah, and using her experience, like in gate two, big mistake there. She knows she's picked up a penalty, but super composed. She doesn't panic. And exactly. look at that. She delivers a run that almost certainly will challenge for the podium, if not the win. For sure. It's, it's, it's incredible how she can like forget about the touch and continue most of the course in a perfect way. So four boats down. Top three, Jessica Fox leads for Australia, ahead of Mallory Franklin and, Grip and uh, Anna Satila. Six boats still to go. Next up, it is Teresa Fissarova of the Czech Republic. One of two Czech boats in this women's kayak final. And surely the home crowd are going to start to get noisy any moment now as Teresa sets off for a place on the podium. Yeah, I think um, the Czechs are very excited. You can hear it in the banks of the river. They're all cheering for her. She was the fastest in the heats. Uh, that was on a Friday, so we know she can be quick over this course. 
and uh, super tight in and out of that upstream gate six, leaving absolutely no margin here. Yeah, she's definitely got the inside in the course. So I think if she keeps it clean, she can pull out a really good run. Well, she's up on Fox of Australia on the top split. But we know Fox actually had a two-second penalty in there, so uh, that uh, shows that she's going to have to be quick on mm -hmm. the bottom part of the course to be able to stay with Jessica Fox, the current race leader. Yeah, definitely. As if now it looks like she's keeping together the run. Boat flat, guiding, it's really good. The boat's bouncing quite a bit, but uh, she has extended the advantage. One. 0.09 now up on the race leader and well great composure there she got yeah. into a bit of trouble there didn't she and uh, she held it together yeah she managed to not lose that uh, edge so Teresa Fisarova again another competitor will be racing in the canoe events but at the moment looking like she's going to challenge the race lead that held by Jessica Fox of Australia. The Czech crowd are going wild here in Prague. And it is just outside oh. and into second place and uh, lost some time at the bottom. Yeah, lost a little bit of time at the bottom, but it was still a very good run. So that is, uh, well, first and second in Australia's Jessica Fox holds on to that first place. The Czech crowd are pleased. They have someone in the podium for now, but we are at the halfway point of this World Cup final here in Prague. And hopefully, in just a few moments time, we'll be able to get a word with our early race leader, Jessica Fox of Australia. It's also her birthday, so she must be pretty excited to be racing here in Prague. Well, first of all, happy birthday, Jess Fox. I, I don't think I've ever seen you breathing so heavily. It was, it was a tough run, was it? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a, a very tough run, a fight from the start to the finish. I had an early mistake on gate two, and I just really had to pull hard the whole way down and gave, gave it everything at the finish. Do you think that time's going to be good enough? Oh, look, I don't know. I think it could, go de it could definitely go faster. It was a... 101 plus two, I think. So Ricardo did a 102 in the semi. We'll see what what the other girls can do. And how about that crowd? Oh, it was amazing. I could hear them cheering and clapping, and it was it just gave me all this energy, um, and yeah, really really helped me get to that finish line. So thank you to the crowd. All right, let's watch these last five paddlers. Good luck, Jess Fox. Well, great to hear from our current race leader, Jessica Fox of Australia. Well, what a birthday present that would be if she can hold on to that. Here are the results at the halfway point in this women's kayak final. Here we're live from Prague in the Czech Republic. Perfect racing conditions, but still five boats to go. And of course, they were the fastest five boats in the semi-final. Yeah, well, we'll see. It's a very tight race. Everyone's super good. The course is hard and tricky, so I think it's still exciting. Well, Jessica Fox has definitely left the door open with that penalty on the early part of the course on gate two. And, uh, well, the Czech crowd, they've got someone in second place at the moment. Teresa Fisser over, but now, next to start for the Czech Republic, Anthony Galashkova, just 21 years old, junior world champion of 2019. And well, she was sixth at the senior world championships last year, so no stranger to being in a final, but uh, how much pressure must be on this young pair of shoulders? Yeah, to be on her home course with all the cheering, I think uh, 
it can help her and also can make you nervous. So I don't know what it'll do to her. It looks as if now that she's having a solid run, but we're only in gate eight. So tidily through the top eight gates, no penalties so far. We'll get an indication of uh, the split time, but our penalty picked up on gate 10 and they're just losing the rhythm through nine, 10 and 11 there. So a second down on Fox of Australia at the midpoint of this 23 gate course. Yeah, that, she lost a, a, a little bit her boat there on that hole, but managed to keep it together even with the touch. So, so Anthony Galuskova now coming into the business end of the course. Still very much in control for a place on the podium, but five and a half seconds. That middle section has been costly indeed. Nicely through 18, great use of the water. Now she's got to pick up the wave, get in tight onto the upstream 20, and importantly, exit tight. Nicely done. Very good. Come to the last stop, which you've got to be pretty tight on it, and pretty high up. So these last three gates uh, are not straightforward either. They, uh, there's a lot of choice, a lot of lines, and even just timing the strokes over the waves to optimize the speed. And it is going to be outside of the top three for Anthony Galashkova of the Czech Republic into sixth place. So the top three for now remains unchanged. Jessica Fox leads for Australia. Mallory Franklin second for Great Britain. And Teresa Fisarova is in third for the Czech Republic. So you can see the grandstands packed. What an atmosphere. And uh, here at this Prague course, the crowd can get so close to the athletes. And that makes such a big difference to, to you as an athlete when you're going down. Yeah, no, definitely. I think here's a place where the most crowd I've ever seen. And uh, it's exciting to me personally. It makes me a little bit nervous. I don't always deal so well with the crowd cheering on me that hard. But if you are able to keep it quiet and keep concentrated, I think it's, it's great for sure. Still four boats to go in this, the women's kayak final here in Prague and the first World Cup of the ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup season. And we're away with racing. Eliska Mintelova sets off from the top of the course and takes an early penalty on gate two. That's a two second penalty added to her time. Of course, Eliska, again, another paddler on a, riding a great wave, really. She was the European champion jointly with Stephanie Horn just a few weeks ago in Liptovsky Mikolas and uh, arguably has been the form boat as well, showing her form in 2021. Oh, she gets another touch. Oh, no. oh, but she really, you're right, oh, she gets offline. Yeah. Offline on 10 and then a 50 second penalty on 11. And unfortunately for Eliska Mintelova of Slovakia, it's not going to be a podium finish today. But still, some valuable World Cup points that are being picked up. Because, of course, this is a five race World Cup season. And uh, each race has, has points up for grabs. So Eliska will be absolutely still coming down, trying to take away some points for the overall system as well. She's having a good bottom section. It won't be enough for a medal with the 50, of course, but she's keeping it together to continue her run and not give up, which is cool to watch. Yes, you're right. I mean, she's showing, showing her class, really, isn't she? She was ninth at the Olympic Games last year and uh, really fluid. You can just see how confident she is on the water. But those three penalties just have made it too much to ask. And Mitalova goes into seventh place. So still... First place, Australia's Jessica Fox. Mallory Franklin in second for Great Britain. In third place, Teresa Fisarova of the Czech Republic. And we still have three boats to go in this women's kayak final. And who can go quicker than that time of 103.91 set by Australia's Jessica Fox? So a tricky section, that gate 10 and 11. 
Sofia Reynoso of the Mexican team, an Olympic semi-finalist from last year. You, uh, you paddled this course. Uh, it's not forgiving, is it? No, it is not. And that section specifically, the water is it's hard. You have those two holes back to back. And um, you got to like find the line and paddle hard. So it's definitely a tricky section. And once you're offline, it's pretty hard to get back on it. So it, it looks like that's kind of what happened to her. In that 50, she hit the pole to the other side. Three boats to go. Camille Prigent of France next to start. As it says on the screen, an under 23 world champion, a regular finalist, and uh, someone you would never rule out for challenging for a place on the podium. It's a very fast spin there. Watch that spin again, it's not that easy. They make it look pretty easy. So now enters the run of offsets. Offset gates down the course, so important to stay ahead of the game. Work with the white water, and it looks like Camille is doing that very nicely. She is down on the split against Jessica Fox of Australia, but she is still in touch. Yeah, she can still pick up a lot of time at the bottom. But yeah, even with the touch, she's still a little bit behind on the split. Fox was good on the middle and the bottom, so Camille Prigent is going to have to do something special to get into first place. But there is a gap between first and second, so a place in the podium is very much up for grabs. And wow, look, the yeah, deficit she... has turned into credit. She's picked up that nice. Camille Prigent is our virtual race leader. She now needs to hold on to it. Very nice on 20. Now she's got to keep focused. She's got to dig deep yeah. and get in and out of the upstream gate 21. The last two gates, I think she's. Looks, yeah. Well, it looks pretty exciting. She might. 103.91, the time to beat. It's outside of that. The time slipping away, but into second place. Camille Prigent for France goes into second place. Jessica Fox there, you can see. She gets to take a breath again. <laughs> Two boats to go. And, uh, well, that means that the, the Czech Republic won't have anyone on the podium, which is uh, probably not necessarily what we would have expected. Yeah, no, no, no. Definitely a little bit shocking. But we'll see. It's wild, she, Jessica, still at the top with one touch. You never know. Well, well done, Camille Prison. Yeah. Into second place for now, with two boats to go in this women's kite final. Fox leads ahead of Prison, and then Franklin. Of course, we still have the fastest two boats to go. And they were both on the podium last year at the World Championships, and it includes the Olympic champion from Tokyo. Yeah, so still two very top competitors. We will see. I think it's, it's tight between them as well. So let's see what they can do. On course, Elena Lilik of Germany sets off in this World Cup first race of the season. She had an outstanding World Championships in 2021, taking away two individual medals in the kayak event and the canoe event. And now, second in the semi-final, looking to extend that, and just looking so smooth on the top gates. Yeah, amazing. That spin looked like she didn't even do it. Very smooth. It's a lot to go, though. That's oh, right. She's got a review. So, for number two. Well, we'll have to wait and see. No penalty showing yet, so it, it's just a sense check, but uh, it does look like a penalty picked up on gate 11, and that yeah. is showing. So the advantage on the top section has almost certainly been wiped out now. But you could say that means it's neutral now. Jessica Fox, the race leader, has yeah. a two-second penalty. Definitely. So let's watch Elena Lilik now coming down through gate 16. Approaching the second split, we'll get an indication of where she stacks up and she's Ooh. maintained the advantage despite the penalty. 0.54, so still very much all to play for. It's all going to be down to who can deliver the bottom section in the best way possible. 
yeah, we will see. It's really, really tight. This last upstream, it's a hard gate. You can lose a lot of time on it. Looks like she doesn't. Nice. So she was a little bit low, but she seemed to carry a lot of boat yeah. speed on the exit. So uh, Elena Lilik has the time of 103.91 to beat. It's going to be close. Is it going to be inside that? Just outside and into second place. Wow. So Elena Lilik continues her strong run. She is guaranteed a medal. She doesn't know what colour it is, but Germany go into second place. And you can see the joy on her face. Yeah. Jessica Fox knows she's got a medal. Currently sitting in first place. Elena Lilik of Germany in second. And Camille Prigent of France is currently in third with one boat still to go. And we'll see what Ricardo Fon can do today in the final. There's Jessica Fox, our current race leader for Australia. She knows she's still got to wait to watch the reigning Olympic champion, the reigning world champion for Germany. Our last starter, Ricarda Funk, will set off and go for gold here in Prague. The Olympic champion of Tokyo 2020, the reigning world champion, and now well, the fastest, of course, in the semi-final as well. But oh. is that a penalty yes. on gate two as well? So I guess they're even at the moment. <laughs> so it is, as you say, it is absolutely all square now. And uh, another penalty on the upstream gate six, potentially. That's confirmed on the screen now. So Ricardo Funk, the Olympic and world champion, has got to produce something very magical here to take the victory away from the birthday girl of Jessica Fox from Australia. Yeah, with two touches, that seems now a little bit harder, but then again, you never know, so we'll see. All well, three touches, maybe. And another one, you're right, confirmed on gate 13. So, Ricarda Funk has, uh, well, she's showing her pace because her split time is uh, very much uh, still in the mix for a place on the podium, but uh, six seconds of penalties. 3.97 the deficit it just shows that she is super fast down the course will she be yeah. able to go under 100 seconds well she picked up another penalty there but this is a very fast run yeah still looks like she's going fast but just quite a bit of touches well i think jessica fox is going to take the win here for sure there's no way back from eight seconds in penalties, but Ricarda Funk is showing us that she has got the pace and she's going to be a dangerous person this season in 2022. Crossing the line into seventh place. And, uh, well, lost a bit of time at the bottom. But uh, it's not to be for Ricarda Funk, but Jessica Fox wins the first ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup of the 2022 season takes the win for Australia ahead of Elena Lilik of Germany and Camille Prigent of France. Yeah, what a birthday present, that's for sure. That you give yourself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite nice. So she did it the hard way in some ways, that early mistake on gate two. But in the end, then uh, she wasn't the only one who had problems with the poles. No, it was a very hard course. Really good athletes, all of them. Oh, what an outstanding uh, final there. Jessica Fox, though, is reigning supreme. She holds firm. She was a winner at the halfway point, and she held firm through to the end. Well, Jess, I don't think you can quite believe that, can you? That you've, you've had a two-second penalty and you've held on and won a gold medal. Congratulations. Happy birthday. What a celebration. Thank you. I'm so happy. Um, 
I, I think standing here and waiting for the results, I just thought, I'm just so stoked to be in the final and if I'm, I was crossing my fingers for a medal and to come away with the gold today is amazing. I'm so proud of how I held it together and attacked the course after that mistake early on. Last year in the K1, you missed the gold at the Olympics, you missed the final at the World Championships. So is there something there this year for you to go out and work for? Uh, yeah, I think I'm always hungry to improve and, and you know, keep bettering myself and my skills and each race is an opportunity to do that and this course in Prague was so challenging today so it was about getting out there and trying to improve on the semi which I did so I was happy. Congratulations Jess, well Thank done. Thank you so much. Well what a performance there from Australia's Jessica Fox. What a start to the World Cup season, just what she wanted as she's looking for four titles in a row of that World Cup season. Helena Lilly picks up where she left off last season and uh, great to see Camille Prigion picking up a medal for France. Yeah, of course. Really good top three. They all delivered really well and it's exciting what's to come for the next World Cups as well. Well, I'd like to thank you, Sophia, for joining me in the commentary box again and giving us uh, an insight from an athlete's perspective. Then. Uh, well, we look forward to seeing you racing in Krakow. Of course, we'll be in action next week. And you can follow all the action live at Planet Canoe. But don't go away, because of course, we've got the men's kayak finals coming up straight after this. And uh, we'll be seeing Jessica Fox in action tomorrow in the women's canoe semi-finals. You can follow them live 9 o'clock Central European time tomorrow for those women's canoe semi-finals. So here are the official results from the women's kayak final, the first World Cup of the 2022 season. Then the Jessica Fox confirmed as winner ahead of Elena Lilic and Camille Prigent. And there are the points for the World Cup season. It's early days yet, and of course double points in the final race. But Jessica Fox starts off where she left behind in 2021 in the World Cup. Look at the crowd here in the great course next to the great historic Hello, city. Hello, my name is Yuri Perskavec. I'm an Olympic champion from Tokyo. The upstream gate we can do in many ways. When a young athlete starts with the sport, he has to first learn a classic upstream on an open defect. Option two is uh, going for a sweep which means uh, do a stroke when coming into the gate and finish the gate with an open defect. It's a short line, but uh, it's not the shortest one. And the option three is uh, coming into the gate with a back sweep and then doing a straight a sweep on the other side. We usually use that option when we have a high approach to the upstream and we need a short exit uh, because it usually turns the boat 360 you cut the line as much as possible. Now we saw our three options. Of course, there are many more. Now it's up to you to choose the best one and go for it. Well, there we see the Olympic champion telling us how to do an upstream gate. And, uh, well, he'll be in action in this final. So myself, Andy Maddock, uh, and uh, alongside me, I'm really delighted to welcome to the commentary box Felix Oxmaltz of the Austrian team, who narrowly missed out, and basically only because you had a penalty. Yeah, uh, my semi-final run was, was quite good. I think the speed was all right, but unluckily I had a touch in the last upstream. So, yeah, now I'm going to watch the final. I hope the boys do good. Well, here's the start list. Reverse order of the semi-finals. And so we will see Peter Kauser going off first off in this uh, competition. And as, uh, as we were just saying there, super tight in the semi-final. So 1.89 seconds separated first at 10th place. And your touch, unfortunately, left you in 11th. Yeah, I, I was really surprised when I, when I saw uh, the results of the, of the semi-final because it's a really hard run. So you would think there would be a bigger time difference between first and 10th. But yeah, Peter was... Lucky won in 10th place and he's starting his final run. So Peter Kauser for Slovenia starts off this men's kayak final. And uh, well, he's an Olympic medalist. He is a multi-world champion. Well, there's nothing I think in this sport he hasn't won. 
and uh, you would never rule him out for taking the honours here today. He definitely has the experience to put down a really fast time on this very technical and hard course. And you can see that he is pedaling not too fast, not pushing too hard. He is really trying to stay on the line and keep the boat going all the way through the, through the first part of the course. So Felix, t tell us a little bit about wh where's the hardest part of this course? Uh, I think from gate, yeah, gate 6 until gate 12, 13, you really need to, to stay on the line and keep the boat going. And the other sections, like this section, you always need to take some extra space to have speed through the, the offset. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck in the stoppers and lose a lot of time there. Yeah, well, you all make it look very easy. And uh, Peter Kauser is certainly doing that as he sneaks into the, upstream, into the downstream 19 and really lines up well for 20. He looks like he's on a good good run here. Yeah, it, it looks all, all together, it looks quite good. I, I think I saw some small mistakes, but we will see if, if that also shows up in the time. But yeah, until now he's clean, and I think that's very important for the final. So around about 94 seconds is the time to uh, beat. That was the fastest time in the semi-finals, but I think we're going to go below that. So 95.54, it's a good run, it's a clean run, but uh, I don't know, I was thinking... I always think we can get to 92 in this final. What do you think? I think 92, 93 is very likely because, yeah, like we said, the semi-final was really tight, so everybody made some mistakes and had a good bottom, a good top, a good middle section maybe. But I think we will see one or two guys putting together the whole run and putting down a really fast time. Yeah, we also saw Yuri Preskovic um, cruising in the last few gates on the course. Yeah, yeah, like he knew he was really fast and I just the other day I looked up his stats uh, about the last major races since 2017 and it's just impressive how how every time he makes the semi-final he made the final too and I think out of 14 World Cup finals he made 11 medals so when I read that uh, I was just impressed. <laughs> uh, well there, Peter Kauser, he has set the benchmark for everyone to follow, 95.54 the time to beat and you'll have to wait and see whether that's enough for a place on the podium well next to start for Austria it is Mario Leitner why don't you give us a bit of information about your compatriot yeah I think Mario really likes hard courses so uh, I think everything's set for him to put down a good run and I hope he can show us what he can do and I wish him all the best let's go well, he's on course now, and uh, certainly in the semi-final, he looked really composed, and uh, he didn't look like he was taking any unnecessary risks. It'll be interesting to see whether, because it's the final, will he take a few more risks? I think for a good result today, maybe it's not really necessary to take some extra risk if you stay on the lines and have a high speed. But, like we said, if you wanted to do this 92-93, uh, yeah, you probably have to do, take some risk and push hard. Well, it's a solid start for Mario. This is the tricky gate 10 that caught so many people out in the semi-final. Losing a bit of speed through this section, but he managed to do all the gates quite nicely. Yeah, that shows up on the split time. 1.78 down on Peter Kauser of Slovenia as he comes into the middle section. Goes wide on the upstream. And this is the bit where you really get the full force of the crowd as well. Um, they're really close. Does it uh, affect you at all? Does it positively, negatively? Uh, I think myself it affects positively because when you're in the right upstreams, you're basically one, one and a half meters away from all the from the crowd. And I like it. I like it a lot. Canoeing is big in Czech, and uh, yeah, it's great to see all the people here. Yeah, and the Czech supporters tend to they, they shout loudest for the Czechs, understandably, <laughs> but they tend to shout for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's clapping, everybody's cheering. If you make it to the finals, you're sure to have a great atmosphere. So a little bit sticky on that uh, penultimate gate there for Mario Leitner. It's going to be outside the lead time, but a respectable clean run. 101.06. Yeah. Sadly, he didn't manage to put together the run he, he was wishing for. Uh, yeah, getting stuck every very bit, and in the end, it adds up, and that's the result you, you have. But it was the final for him today, so I think he should be happy about that, even even though you're not happy when you, you're not satisfied with your final run. Well, that's it, we saw Peter Kauser there, race leader. Still, uh, well, he gets to breathe again. It'll be a long wait for him to see whether he's done enough, but uh, 
Yeah, great to see Mario in a final. And uh, how important is that, the start of the season, particularly as the World Championships are early this, this year, um, to get your season off to a good start? Yeah, I think it gives you a lot of confidence. And on the one hand, you, you're very happy to have a good start. On the other hand, you all, as an athlete, you always think you're only as good as the last race was. So you try to push hard for the next one again. But if you know you have one or two good results, uh, you know you're in contention for, for the good times and for the good uh, yeah, end results. So I think it's very important to have the first few races good to have a good start to leading up to the World Champs. Yeah, and you might be sat next to me now, but uh, I guess you've got a European Championship medal in your pocket from earlier on in the year. So uh, a good start so far. Perfect start. Like two medals in two days at the Euros. So I'm, I'm very happy with my start. <laughs> so next to start, Martin Dugud of Switzerland. He goes for the top spot in this World Cup final here in Prague. He's a very light and technical paddler. Uh, you can see him floating on the water and trying to keep this boat up to speed. It looks really good until now, but now he's coming to the critical section. It's very nice on the upstream six. Really carried a lot of boat speed on the exit. It tends to be quite a high risk taker, my experience. Um, yeah. But when he gets it right, oh, yeah, deadly yeah, yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. He gets stuck at all three stoppers of this offset, so he lost quite some time there, but maybe with a good bottom perk he can still get close to Peter. Well, in and out of the upstream gate 13 nicely, but you're right, it's starting to show that Peter's run was pretty solid. Certainly put the pressure on those still to come. Especially if you, if you have troubles on the top part, uh, you're going to use some extra power to <laughs> to try to stay online and do all the gates and that doesn't make it easier to do a good bottom half so we'll see if Matar manages to to get closer well he has closed the deficit a little bit but it's nearly two seconds that's a lot as you know full well that could make the difference between first and tenth place in the semi-final so uh, Martin do good another clean run though coming together just two gates to go 95 54 is the time to beat it's tidy, but it's going to be outside of that time. How far outside? Well, into second place. So he did start to close that deficit. Another 20 gates or so, he might have uh, might have made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was tr he was coming closer. But I think Peter's bottom, especially, was it was good. It was good. So I think you just have to try to not lose too much time to on him on the top part, and then it's possible to beat his time. Well, we're live from Prague in the Czech Republic. This the men's kayak final. Myself, Andy Maddock, and alongside me, Felix Oxmaltz of the Austrian team, of course, fourth at the Olympic Games in Tokyo 2020 with a paddle back, which uh, I still remember. I'm sure you won't forget that in a hurry. Probably I'll remember that the rest of my life, but I'm still happy with my Olympic experience. It was, yeah, after the paddle back, I knew I just. Yeah, got to try my hardest now and the rest of the run was really good, so I ended up with a good result. Even though, yeah, it's always hard to get 4th or 11th in a race, so... Well, it's the uh, early part of the season and certainly we're just seven weeks away from the World Championships in Augsburg, Germany. Next to start for Brazil, Pedro Goncalves, better known as Pepe. Uh, great to see him. He was in the World Championship final last year and uh, great to see him straight back into the next major final here in Prague. And, uh, well, he got in. Did he have a penalty? No, I think Yoshi was the only one who managed to come to the final with a penalty. You're right. He was super quick. I yeah. think now he found time in the middle section, but... I think that will have a review by the... Ch oh, already 50 there. Yeah, looked really, really close. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like he just cut the line a little bit too tight going into, well, 3, 4, 5. And uh, he's paid a heavy price, but he still get World Cup points. So uh, he's still very much in the mix. Yeah. And uh, it's not a bad start to the season. Even if a 10th place, that will uh, give some World Cup points. It's a five race series, double points in the World Cup final. And I know that he had uh, he's back with his old coach for this season, uh, Ettore Evaldi. And yeah, his battling is looking really good again this season. So I'm happy for him that yeah, the work can be continued after a short break. And his final run is for sure not 
to his satisfaction, but uh, I'm I'm very sure that he will put some other good runs down during the this season. Yeah, so that 50-second penalty on gate five, but still he's paddling it out. And of course, don't forget we're racing in Krakow in Poland next week, World Cup two, and then the following week there's a cross belt, and that will be in Tartsen in Slovenia. And again, all of the action you can follow live at Planet Canoe. But Pepe Goncalves paddles out his run and uh, well stops the clock 152.01, and uh, well, great to see acknowledges the support the crowd and it's not to be today but uh, he's definitely improving by every race here we see it actually great so a bit tight on four and then she yeah. last left it late he stays on his inside edge and the water is pushing down on the boat so you have no chance to make it far enough to the other side of the riverbed now on the right side, all the water is pushing on his boat and he's just not fast enough to get there. That's how costly it can be if you lose your balance for a tiny fraction of a second. Yeah, well, you all make it look very easy. So to some extent, sometimes you need someone to make a mistake so that people really appreciate the, the power of the white water and just how you have to respect the white water as well. Definitely, definitely. You really know, need to know the course so you know the places where you have to respect the water 100% and maybe you can find some tiny places where you think, okay, I will cut there and I will try to, to be stronger than the water. But if you choose wrong, it's, it's not a good <laughs> place to be. Next up for Germany, Stefan Hengst. We have two Germans in this 10 boat men's kayak final and Stefan well he was uh, very early off he only qualified through in the heats on the second run but uh, he certainly made up for it in the semi-final and he's already cutting the lines I can hear yeah. you take a deep breath there I thought the same uh, will happen to him as it did to Pepe but he kept his boat flat and managed to do the gate so he's in the middle of the hard section now and I I think he will have another penalty review and 50 seconds already there. So unfortunately, Stefan just uh, had left that one up to the judges on gate 10 and a 50 second penalty awarded. It says review. That's because the judges on the bank have given a 50 second penalty. Now the video judges will have another look at it just to make sure that uh, it's fair and then uh, any penalties will be confirmed. That's what I was talking about when we spoke about the course before the final started. It's a really hard and challenging course. Uh, so it was surprising how many 50s there were in the semi-final and also very surprising how tight it was to qualify for the final. So uh, usually, yeah, you would see more mistakes, but not as big mistakes as were made. Yeah. Well, it's all gone a bit wrong now for Stefan. He probably knows he's got a 50. Um, you've made a mistake on a couple of other gates and uh, well what it does mean is that Peter Kauser at the halfway point in this men's kayak final is leading the way for Slovenia ahead of Martin Dugud of Switzerland and Mario Leitner of Austria there he is on the left Peter Kauser the question is will it be enough to uh, to go all the way Bruskavets, De Gennaro, Aigner, Pluszynski, Griga. Ah, it's a Bruskavets is Olympic medalist, Aigner is Olympic medalist, Griga is Olympic medalist. Pluszynski is just doing his first senior final, so I think he's very motivated to do good. And Giovanni is just such a composed battle. I, I doubt it that it will be enough, but we will find out shortly. Well, don't go away because we have, as uh, Felix has just outlined, a big lineup still to come. But what a great angle there! Unfortunately for Stefan, didn't get his whole head inside the gate line and that 50 second penalty applied. You can really see him fighting and pushing hard, trying to do his best. But yeah, sadly, sometimes it's just, it doesn't work out. Well, we're at the halfway point in this men's kayak final. And uh, well, maybe we'll get a word with Peter Kauser, the early race leader. Well, Peter Kauser, you just snuck into the final and here you are leading at halfway. 
Uh, yeah, I was a little bit lucky in the semis when I came when I crossed the finish line in the semis. Uh, I thought like, okay, I'm done for today, and I already went up to the tent to pack my stuff and uh, just watch the semis till the till the end, or not even that, and then just go to the hotel. But then a little bit of luck happened, and I just made it through. So I opened the final, and I'm happy. I'm still leading after the halfway. Yeah, you, you were clean, which is important. Do you think your time is fast enough? Uh, I don't think the time is fast enough, but um, yeah, the water went up a little bit from the semis, so the gates are a little bit lower, some of them like on the crucial level. So then you can't actually navigate the boat down the course like you want, but you have to be careful most of the time not to touch the gate. So I'm happy I managed to do a clean run, even though it was still some margin to gain, but uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. All right, well, let's keep our fingers crossed. Good luck, Peter. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> that is very interesting what you said right now, that the water level went just up. It's enough if it goes up one, two, three centimeters. You really feel it as a paddler, and especially in the hard sections where you try to dodge below the poles and try to cut the lines to have more space for the next offset. Um, yeah, you can see it in the times that it's just much harder to do the same fast lines as they did in the semis. Well, we don't have long to wait until the person that the Czech crowd have come to see. So very shortly, Yuri Pereskovic, who uh, arguably would be the, the favorite to take the win here on home water, the Olympic champion, world champion. Here he is, Yuri Pereskovic, the Olympic champion for 2020 Tokyo Games, sets off and goes for gold here in Prague. <laughs> so he'll have a lot of pressure on his shoulders, uh, but he seems to be able to thrive under pressure. Definitely. Uh, he actually doesn't crack under pressure. And he's doing a nice spin on gate number three. Looking very clean until now. So we can hear the Czech crowd very much. Cheering his every move down this course. And this is where nice. he's going to find some time. Well, 0.34 down. But he will be up for the next split. This section was really good, the best we saw in the final so far. But he slipped out of the stopper and has to push really hard for the upstream. Yeah, he's had to dig deep, hasn't he, and uh, use up some energy he would have hoped to use further down the course. But he is also one of the fittest battlers I know, so I think he got some, some left to push hard and try to the crowds there is definitely carrying him recently but look is that a penalty it is on gate 17 and Yuri Priskovic is under pressure here as he comes into the penultimate upstream he will try to do a very fast last upstream now I guess he knows the course so well he he just knows where he can risk and where where he has to stay on the line so the Olympic champion now coming down through the final gate on this 23 gate course 95-54, the time to beat. He's outside of that. And, well, Correct. sensational into third place. And uh, Peter Kauser still leads for Slovenia, ahead of Martin Dugud of Switzerland. And Jiri Preskovic of the Czech Republic goes into third place with that two-second penalty on gate 17. So where, where did the time go there? I think just after the section, he did really good when, he, the, when you go from gate 4... 12 to up 13 you try to use the stopper and he just slid out of the stopper and had to go below it and it takes a lot of power and it even takes more time to to push all the way there uh, i think he lost a lot of time there and honestly also the last up i think we saw people do it better um yeah all in all it was still a, a good performance and he, he tried his best but peter kaus has survived definitely one of the big guys now yeah, well, here's gate 17, and no doubt he hit it. But, uh, just being reviewed there, hits it with the front of his point, C8. Two seconds penalty added on to his time. And, well, it uh, does make the difference between third place and second place. But, uh, well, there's a surprise. I thought he was the person who was going to do a 92, but I think your point about the low... Well, Peter's point, and you're, you're backing up the low poles. Maybe it's um, not going to be quite as fast. Giovanni De Gennaro of Italy, now super consistent, always in the final, always in the mix, and uh, great battler, great guy. Um, yeah, 
I'm crossing my fingers for him because his style is just very composed, very calm. And yeah, so I hope he's doing good. He was on the podium with you at the European Championships. He, he got the silver medal, didn't he? So he was. Um, he's had a good start to the season after a disappointing Olympic Games. Yeah, he definitely was on head. Oh, he was. He got stuck there, but now he has a nice exit out of the of the offset. So maybe he didn't lose too much time. This is the stop over here. She lost his race, but Giovanni is doing it very nicely. <laughs> very nice indeed. Very little room for error there, and. Uh, Really big frame, really powerful paddler. And he touched the gate 14. So I think now it, it will be really hard for him to try to beat Peter. So we'll get an indication of the second split. 1.89. So he, well, he has made up some time from that early deficit. But yes, the two second penalty has really put him on his back foot now. He is tidy though. But is it too little, too late at the bottom of the course to make up that time? Also, he chooses the wide exit on the last upstream gate to carry a lot of speed through the last two gates towards the finish line. And he's pushing hard. Well, it's going to be close, but it's going to be outside. And into second place second for Giovanni De Gennaro of Italy. And, uh, well, look at that. He was quick, but the touch on gate 14 was expensive. Yeah, when you go down the course and you fight for every tenth of a second, you try to be perfectly on the line, and you see just because of a touch something doesn't work out, it's two seconds to give away with the blink of an eye, and you have to fight so hard again to get back. And here we can see with the shaft of the paddle, he just touched the lower end of the pole, and yeah, picked up two more seconds. Well, we take a breath, because this final, Peter Kaus is still leading the way. Three boats to go now in this 10-boat men's kayak final here. We're live from Prague. You can follow all the action at Planet Canoe. We've got the canoe events and the extreme slalom tomorrow, Sunday. So semi-final start at 9 o'clock. Extreme slalom, 4.30 Central European time tomorrow. But we are getting into the sharp end of this men's kayak final. And, well, De Gennaro is in second place, but uh, the door is still wide open. So, Eigner Hannes next up, and I think Peter Carlsen is already looking at the start list, how many more guys are there to come? Well, Hannes Eigner for Germany, the world champion of 2018, he's a two-time Olympic medalist as well, and uh, you'd never rule him out, particularly on this kind of course, I would say. Definitely not, he is a very strong paddler, and he has a really, really simple style, which proves to be very fast, so... We will see now what he can do with that now today. Uh, ducking in and out, seven and eight. No problems on the top section. And we'll get a split time. But it is nearly two seconds down on Kauser. So has he just gone a little bit cautious at the top? I, I found, have a hard time to see where he lost two seconds on Peter. But yeah, if the gates are low and you always have to avoid the poles a bit, you can lose quite a lot of time with doing that. Well, now he's coming to the business end. We'll get the second split when he comes through gate 17. Really nice offset at 15-16, and now on a straight line towards the last hard offset. I had to touch. Well, he'd done some hard work as well because he'd closed the deficit down to just 0.14, but that two-second penalty and a review actually going on currently on the downstream gate three. Hannes Eigner now very much... Uh, chasing the time of Peter Kauser. It was nip and tuck, and I think he's now outside of the time. And he'll be going for a medal at the most. He's not going to challenge the race lead time. Hannes Eigner of Germany stops the clock in fifth place, 98.32. That two-second penalty confirmed on gate 17. And, well, Peter Kauser still leading with two to go, ahead of Italy's Giovanni De Gennaro. And Martin Dugud still holding on for Switzerland in third place. And there, Peter, well, he knows he's got a medal. He for sure is happy to, yeah, to have just made it in the final. And what it looks like, he put down a very solid run. And he adapted the best until now to the conditions. 
uh, which changed apparently from semis to final. So we will wait for Kuba Prasinski and Kubo Griga <laughs> to Jakobs. Indeed. They were the fastest from the semi finals, and uh, they're the two remaining paddlers still to go in this men's kayak final. I really hope for Kuba Prasinski that he will manage to to keep his focus for his first final and present his skills as good as he can and yeah, we will see. So, next to start for Poland, it is Jakub Brzezinski in his first senior final. And what a way to do it, qualifying through in joint first in the semi-final. Well, 95.54 is the time to beat and it's very open out there. He doesn't have to do anything special to get on the podium, but it's easy to say it from here. <laughs> if you're on the start line and your heart is beating and you're just trying to focus on what you're going to do next, it's, it's not so easy to, to, think, <laughs> to think how easy it is to get a medal. But I agree, he, he just needs to do yeah, a nice job there and not risk too much. And he's doing so until now. He's just 1.2 down, and I, I think he did a, a quite good top part. So we will see if I so just saw the same thing happen to him that happened to Yeshi. Yeah, he rejected on that uh, move. That's one of those standard moves. I mean, how, how many times have you practiced that in training? Very, very often. Like you said, this move is nearly in every race, and you, you try to, to find the newest and best line there. but. In the race, you only got one chance, and when you're training 1,000 times, it's yeah, it's not as easy as you might think to do it on this exact in this exact moment. Yeah, look at that 4.3. That uh, particularly that mistake in gate 12 to 13 down. That's uh, that's not good. And is that a penalty? Yes, it is confirmed on gate 20. So unfortunately, really making life tough. A little bit low in 21. And it's not going to challenge the race lead. But uh, let's just make sure we acknowledge this first final for Jakub Brzezinski of the Polish team. And of course, we race in Poland next weekend. So what a boost for him as he goes into his home World Cup in Krakow. But only into seventh place at the moment. And it is still the top three unchanged. Peter Kauser there it leads the way ahead of Giovanni De Gennaro. Uh, Martin Dugud of Switzerland with one boat to go. So it's tough, but there'll be a lot of learning there. Definitely. I think, like you said, he can. it will hurt now to have a bad final run, but I think he can take away a lot of positive for next weekend, home World Cup, and knowing you will be fast enough to make the final, uh, it's a good thing, and I, I think he will, he will see that. Well, we've got three World Cups on the bounce, so we're here in Prague, then Krakow in Poland next weekend, and then Slovenia, we're in Tartsen, just on the outskirts of Ljubljana. And you can follow all the action live at Planet Canoe. And there, uh, the only penalty picked up, but just the slightest of penalty. It doesn't matter how much you touch it, if you touch it, two seconds added to your time. One boat still to go in this men's kayak final. And it is the Olympic silver medalist from Tokyo. It is Jakub Grigar for Slovakia. And of course, uh, he got married only a week or so ago. He did right after Europeans next weekend. He yeah, got married to his fiancée and I'm yeah, very happy for him to, to keep going like this through life. And I hope he's performing good today. Just an early touch on gate four. Uh, but probably he recognized it and will try to, to push even harder now. Well, he certainly, when he finds the groove, he is very uh, quick. Hey, but this it looked really good, but the touch definitely was costly. Yeah, he's certainly it's quite a long way back from a plus four now. Peter Kauser must be feeling a little bit more relaxed on the finish line, but it's never over till it's over. And he even picked up one more touch at upstream gate 13. So plus six seconds penalties, it will be really hard to, to fight for one of the podium places. And one more touch, uh, that's definitely not the run Kubo was hoping for. 
No, it's uh, it's all fallen apart. He certainly set off. He was absolutely leaving nothing on the river. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, the penalties have added up. Eight seconds of penalties now, but you can see his pace even uh, on that second split. He was uh, just 3.6 seconds down at the time. He had six seconds of penalties. But uh, it's going to be outside the time. So Peter Kauser will be smiling now. Jakob Grigar for Slovakia goes into sixth place. And, uh, well, there is, uh, I was going to say our top three, but uh, Martin has just uh, walked off the side of the shot. But you can see they're really happy and they did great today. Uh, it's really hard when the conditions change like that, when the water suddenly is higher, to adapt to that. And these three guys did it the best, so well deserved. Well, well done to Peter Kauser of Slovenia, the oldest athlete on this uh, men's kayak field completely, not just in the final. 38 years of, old, of age, but he is still very much a key contender. He takes the win here ahead of De Gennaro of Italy, of course. Giovanni back-to-back uh, -back silver medals. He picked one up at the European Championships just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, good to see Switzerland on the podium. Martin Dugud takes a bronze medal here in Prague. But there on the left, our winner, Peter Kauser. Can you believe it? You're back on top of the podium. First time <laughs> since 2018. Well, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, I did like a clean, okay run. I still had some mistakes, but yeah, I was just uh, happy uh, when I got to the podium, when I saw I'm on the podium, and now to take the win here in Prague, uh, yeah, I'm really happy. The last time this happened was in 2018 when I won the Europeans here. So, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> what, was, what was it like waiting? You were the first paddler out there. You had to wait for everybody. Well, I, like I said, I was a little bit lucky to progress into the finals. So I said, like, now I'm in the finals. Let's try to make the most out, out of it. And at the end, it was, uh, I started the last. I started the first and uh, I stayed on the first position till the end. So I'm really, really happy. And what a great way to start perhaps your final Olympic cycle. Uh, not perhaps, but for sure, this is my last uh, Olympic cycle. I hope I could, uh, I can qualify it for uh, Paris Olympic Games and try to do my best there. But I'm not, I will not retire yet, so you will see me around for at least two seasons more. Good stuff. Congratulations, Peter. Enjoy it. Thank you. Well, great to see Peter Kauser of Slovenia back on top of the podium. Felix Oshmans of Austria, your reflections on that final? Yeah, in, in the beginning it was hard to tell why why the times are not lower, but then when Peter told us that the gates are just lower than they were in the semis, you could really see that some athletes struggled to keep the same line as in the semi-final. So I think it was very interesting to watch how they adapt to it. And yeah, I'm very happy for Peter to be back on the top and to hear that he will be with us two more seasons at least. Well, yes, and uh, he's always a great competitor, isn't he? And uh, you can never rule him out. And he, he worked so hard just to get his first silver medal at the Olympic Games in uh, Rio. And yet you'd never rule him out of getting another medal in Paris. Definitely, definitely. He's always a good contender and uh, yeah, definitely one of the great ones in our sport. And I'm happy to keep racing against him. Well, that concludes the men's kayak racing here. Of course, we're just waiting for the final results and then the, the World Cup standings. And uh, well, what a competition we've had here. And of course, we've got the canoe events tomorrow. The women's canoe semi-finals get underway at nine o'clock Central European time. And then the men's canoe events. But here are the results. Peter Kauser wins in Prague and takes the first World Cup win of the season. Giovanni De Gennaro back-to-back -back silver medals after the European Championships in second. And then great to see Switzerland, Martin Dugud on the podium. And in terms of World Cup standings there, Peter Kauser goes into race two. Krakow in Poland next weekend on top of the leaderboard. And of course, he finished second in the World Cup series last season. Only missed out in the final during in the final race of the uh, of the world cup final
But that wraps up the action today here on Planet Canoe. So we will be in action tomorrow. Women's Canoe and the Men's Canoe semi-finals. Nine o'clock Central European time. Join us then. But of course, also the Extreme Slalom, 4.30 in the afternoon. Again, live at Planet Canoe. But from myself, Andy Maddock, and a big thank you to Felix Oschmaltz. It's goodbye for now. Thanks for having me. Have a nice day.